If you ask a student of color here at Braintree High, racism is a daily occurrence. In Braintree, I've been with a couple of friends just hanging out. We've been walking to a friend's house. There was like an incident that happened in Braintree and we were profiled. Like they asked us if we knew anything about it. We wasn't anywhere near the scene. We had nothing to do with the scene. Freshman year, I was in my biology class and we were like learning about like penguins and stuff. And um, I think like a little bit about genetics. My teacher was like, well, Nyla, you have a different colored nose than the rest of us. And I was the only person of color in my class. So then I kind of just looked at my friend and like made a face and then he like tried to like rationalize and apologize after. But it was like already too late, like he already said it. The problem is they're not aware of like what they're saying and then they're just saying it and then trying to apologize after. Middle school, people will ask me like, oh, can I have the pass, can I have the pass? Like, People won't, will want to say the N-word, just like say it, I guess, because like, they think it makes them look cool. On cultural day, last year when I wore my own flag to school on my shirt, and one of the teachers, administrators, had came up to me and said, oh, are you Cuban? My ethnicity is Puerto Rican, and it clearly it wrote Puerto Rican on my shirt. And then he had said, oh, you guys are all the same anyway. These are just some of the examples of experiences students of color endure at Braintree High. Frustrated and tired of these reoccurring events, students took it into their own hands to have their voices heard. On Monday, November 15th, around 300 Braintree High students gathered in the gym lobby at 935 and staged a walkout protest of the unchecked racism in Braintree. Don't come disrespecting us for no reason because we never did anything. Students made their way to five corners where they spoke about the unchecked discriminatory speech and actions from students and faculty. They then continued their march to Town Hall where they continued to voice their frustration to the entire town. It was long overdue, in my opinion, because racism in Branchy has been going on for a while. We wanted the administrators to understand our point of view and that it's not only like just the students, but it's also the administrators that make students feel uncomfortable. The outcome of the walkout, even to students, was unexpected. I actually did not expect that many people to go because um, I heard some people were just like wishy-washy about it. Some people didn't want to go. Some people like didn't think, but it was a lot bigger than I thought it would be. I walked down and I, I saw the amount of kids that were in the gym lobby. I was surprised because I thought, honestly thought it would be like not as much as it was. I thought there would be like 50 people most. I literally didn't even think it was going to happen, but I was happy that we had over 300 people participate. After the walkout, Dr. Scully put out a student square announcement where he explained the events of the day and also said, Throughout this morning's events, the primary focus of the BHS administration has been on the safety of all students, both those who participated in the protest and those who remained in the building. As a school, we recognize that more conversation is always helpful and welcome the opportunity to continue discussing the issues brought up by the students who raised their voices today. Despite this, students still felt unheard by administration and town officials. I thought it was inappropriate. I thought it did not reflect what actually had happened. And I felt like the administration was trying to glorify what they did to make it seem like they were part of, a, part of it and supporting us, but they really weren't. And they, them and the police half the time were paying attention. They were having their own side of conversations. When they were at town halls watching it from Nyla's live, and you could hear them saying, like we're trying to talk to you like why are you guys having side conversations so that was just really disrespectful we were talking to everyone and they kind of took it as so as we were talking to the students when they were having side conversations and laughing when it was actually no laughing matter dr scully then sent out a follow-up announcement the weekend after where he said what is more important in my mind is that we recognize that we are past due as a school community for an honest reckoning about why hateful and hurtful language continues, wherever and whenever it takes place. BHS is a place that is capable of incredible acts of kindness and inclusion. If we truly believe in our BHS pride values of respect and diversity, then we have an obligation to explain clearly and forcefully the power of hateful language and why in any place and at any time it is both harmful to its targets and corrosive to our school community. Monday's protest shows that there is plenty to do and that BHS needs to redouble its efforts to make sure that all of our students feel welcomed at our school. I want to let the entire school community, and in particular the students who shared their words on Monday, know that we remain committed to doing just that. I was actually very pleased like reading it because the first one that he sent out after the protest, like 
it seemed like he wasn't like telling the truth, but this one like it seemed like he like cares and like actually trying to like fix stuff. What these students really hope for is to be listened to and for change to take place. I hope to see the students, the administration, and the, and the faculty just like be less racist, be less ignorant, and try to understand everyone as like a community, whether you're gay, straight, the race, anything. More people just have to be educated. And I want school to be a place where people want to come, people feel, people feel safe. Administration needs to open their ears and just like listen more, because I feel like too much stuff is being brushed under the rug and it needs to like, stuff needs to change. We asked Dr. Scully about future plans to combat discrimination and promote diversity at the school, and he sent us a statement saying, even with all of this, there's obviously plenty of work to still be done, particularly when it comes to hiring disparities in student outcomes, curriculum revision, and student speech and behavior outside of the classroom setting. The last several weeks have seen the start of productive dialogue, and I am optimistic that our entire school community can continue to get better. With the walkout shining light on the underlying issues at Braintree High, students and faculty are hopeful for change. This is Amaya Howell and Bree Bully reporting for WAMP TV. We don't have no enemies, white, black, whatever color, we want to stay the same. We are the same. We bleed the same. We, we hurt the same.